This video is part of a series. Be sure to check out the full playlist in the link in the description of this video. I hope you're enjoying these shell script tutorials. And uh, we're looking at some shell commands today. Today we're going to be looking at the getting the PID, uh, the process ID of a running process, a running program. Uh, you, this is useful to in many ways to kill a process, but if you need to get a process ID, there's two different ways. The way that I normally do it, which is not the best way, and I think a lot of people do this, is they use the PS command. So if I if I PS, I, it will give me a list of running programs, but that's just for this current session. If I do uh, AUX is usually the way I run it, which gives me for all users and all that stuff. And then, of course, I can grep that if I want to say, let's say my shell is Z shell, so I probably have a few of those running right there. Let's clear the screen and run that again. So this is all the Z shell, or at least all the commands uh, running with the word Z shell in there, which is not necessarily all Z shell uh, processes. For example, I'm getting the grep command that I just ran because it has the word Z shell. So that's not the best, not the cleanest way to do it. Well, you can also use the PS command. Uh, if you look in the man page, dash capital Z is case sensitive, and I type ZSH, it's going to give us nice little clean. These are, you know, uh, processes, here's the IDs, the TTY for them, and uh, time, uh, which we're not even going to look at, but uh, CMD is the command. So that's nice, clean, we're not going to have to worry about that. Grep command, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine, and if we want to, there's probably a PS command to get just the process ID, uh, but I would pipe this into uh, just doing what I know, uh, dollar sign one, meaning the first column, and that kind of works. We got the process IDs here, but we also have this PID, which we could remove with awk or grep, blah, 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 blah. But we're piping, again, unnecessarily. We don't need to do that. And again, there might be a PS command to get this process ID. Uh, look through the man page. But I'm going to show you uh, two other ways that actually uh, work a little bit better. Uh, one, and this is the simplest to remember, is PID of. So it will give you the PID of, and I can say Z shell here, and it just gives us all the process IDs for the Z shell processes. Another one is pgrep. Uh, and I said to say pgrep Z shell. And it basically gives you the same output. Not necessarily the same or it looks like reversed. Um, one gives you in a column format. One gives you, you know, with spaces, either or. You can loop through those uh, and kill them all if you want. Although the kill all command <laughs> would also work. Um, but you can go through those, and if you need the PID uh, of a process, uh, whether it's running one or more, those are probably the two cleanest ways I know of, is PID of and PGREP. Uh, so check those out. And I know a lot of, there's a lot of different variations of grep out there, egrep, pgrep, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of those processes, depending on the version of grep you have, uh, well, those process. A lot of those functions, depending on what version of grep you have, might be built into regular grep already. And in fact, that might be an alias for regular grep. I don't even look into that. I just know pgrep, Z shell. But actually, PID of is the one that I've started using recently because it's just um, easier to remember. If I just need the PID, obviously, um, doing uh, my original command, if I'm, uh, let's see, PSAUX, grep, Z shell, uh, gives me a little more information if I'm looking for a particular one. I go, oh, and then I can copy and paste. But if I just want to script it out to grab the PID of all the processes or, you know, maybe find the latest one, I can use one of those other commands. And it's a bit cleaner. Uh, one of the most powerful things in a, in a shell is the, the ability to pipe the output of one command into another command. But at the same time, you should limit doing that as much as you can because you're running processes you don't necessarily need if one command can do it. So, I do thank you for watching. Uh, as always, uh, be sure to check out my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description there. You can search through all my scripts, my notes, under the uh, scripts section. It's either called scripts or notes on my website. I need to check. I think it's called scripts, and it'll bring you to my notes, uh, which is basically uh, anytime I create a script or write notes for myself, I put them in paste bin. And paste bin is great, but there's no like, clean way to search through it. So every day I have a cron job on my uh, server that pulls down the latest uh, posts that I've done, puts them into a database, and then this interface on my website will search through it in a very sloppy way. I actually have every script load into the HTML of the page, and then I use JavaScript to, to sort through that. And really, I should be 
sorting it with the database, not loading everything to the page because it makes it a little slow. It's not that slow on a desktop computer. On a phone, right now there's almost 600 scripts in there, and again, it searches through all of the words on that, and your device doing that. So on an older phone, it might take three to five seconds for it to filter through everything. So I really need to rewrite that to do everything on the server side, just as a, you know, just that's, but I'm actually holding off on that because I'm actually starting to use GIST more. So I'm posting all my scripts to Pastebin and GIST. So I'll probably look into seeing if there's an API for GIST um, and start using that instead because that definitely is a little bit nicer because it does revisions and stuff like that if you've never used it. Uh, if you've used Git, it's like Git, but for, you know, projects there's one or two files rather than a full-blown project. Anyway, I'm babbling now, but look through that. I have lots of great notes there. I put it there. I built for myself, but I'm sharing it with you guys. I go there all the time. You know, I know I know how to do something, but I don't remember how to do it. I can type in the keywords, and it will narrow down my, my scripts, and I can look and see how to do something without having to Google it and then read through articles. It's just that my notes are very short or code there. Check it out. Also, check out the support section on my page. You can go to patreon.com forward slash melox1000 or my PayPal account. Again, all at filmsidechris.com. Go ahead, check that out. Support is great. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. I appreciate you watching. I also appreciate you sharing so other people can watch too. Be considerate of other people. Let them know how great my videos are. As always, I hope that you have a great day.